Welcome. I'm Michael Wood. I work at Bluehost. <laughs> um, I've uh, been doing WordPress development for, I think, what, 15 years now? Um, so done a lot of PHP and, and various things. Um, so topic today is interactive debugging. And uh, we'll kind of jump in here. So, uh, <clears throat> so I think everybody, when they first start out as a PHP developer, they have to figure out how to debug, right? So usually there's kind of a progression that happens. Um, is what uh, the first step is what I call black box debugging. So this is where maybe you're a new WordPress developer and uh, you're working with WordPress and WordPress is just this black box that you don't really know anything about and uh, you, you know don't always know what, what to give it or what you're going to get out. <laughs> um, and so you're just kind of guessing at what's, what's broken, right? Uh, you have absolutely no visibility <clears throat> and then uh, you learn about this thing called uh, var dump, and uh, then then we have dump debugging, right? So you you start having slightly better guesses about what might be broken, and dumping out clues onto the page as to what might be going on. Uh, still very limited uh, visibility into whatever the issue is, um, and so uh, kind of a still a pretty simplistic debugging option. Uh, so, what we're here for today is obviously we want to go with interactive debugging so we can have full visibility of the code and understand everything that's going on uh, behind the scenes. So, no, no questions. Um, so, we're, yeah, so we'll get to the setup, but before we do that, um, just to kind of emphasize the importance of interactive debugging, um, as a new WordPress developer, I got very good at guessing what was wrong. Um, and then, you know, var dump was helpful. Uh, but again, there was just so much about WordPress. Uh, it's very hard to wrap your head around all of the things that are going on. Uh, you know, everything from, you know, trying to customize roles in WordPress to, you know, routing and all kinds of stuff. Um, so when I first uh, started working with somebody who uh, was kind of my initial code mentor, he introduced me to uh, interactive debugging. Now, granted, it was a lot harder to set up then. Um, <laughs> I spent two days, I think, trying to get it set up. Uh, but that was the key to me learning WordPress really, really well. Uh, so that was the thing that allowed me to, and, and I probably did what most people probably wouldn't do, but I literally took a day and just started the debugger at line one of WordPress <laughs> and went through like, what's happening now? What's happening now? Uh, everything that was happening on the front end of the site uh, from the URL routing to whatever else. Uh, so I learned to hook in and create pages that don't actually exist, but they look like they exist in WordPress and do all kinds of interesting things. So, um, so yeah, so if you've kind of seen WordPress but not really you know, delved it deep into any particular area, uh, this is going to allow you to, to do that. Um, and it's great if you run into a specific problem. So, you know, I've got this plugin and this plugin, and I can't figure out for the life of me why this WooCommerce product is just not showing up, but it's in the back end, you know. Uh, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, you can just kind of jump in and start to try to figure stuff, stuff out. Um, <clears throat> so, we're going to look at the debugging setup from kind of two angles here. Uh, so we've got, uh, well, I think most people probably use uh, VS Code nowadays uh, because it's really good with JavaScript. Uh, it's also good with PHP if you configure it that way. Um, in my opinion, there's still some shortcomings when it comes to like heavy refactoring. Uh, so I personally use PHP Storm, uh, but I think that is also another very popular one. So we're going to kind of cover that one as well. As far as our local environment, um, there are a lot of options for having a local dev environment. And depending on which one you choose will determine how easy or difficult it may be to set up uh, interactive debugging. So the goal today is go with the easiest possible solution. Um, and so this is what we have. So we're going to look at VS Code first. And so first, and I do have some links and stuff at the end of the slides. Um, 
forgot to have an easy way to share that, but hopefully I'll do that at the end. Uh, post it on Twitter or something after. Um, so VS Code, obviously, is a prerequisite if we're going to debug with VS Code. Um, and then in, we're going to use local WP for our local development environment. So personally, I use um, Lando most of the time. Uh, Lando has some easy options for setting up debugging. Uh, one thing to note about um, running, in this case, we'll be running something called xDebug. If you're running xDebug, it can slow things down. So if you're not actively debugging, you can just turn it off. That way things will run a little faster. And then when you need it, you can turn it on and then you know run through your code step by step. So once you've gone through the setup um, or in installation of local WP, the first thing you'll need to do is go into the little add-ons uh, sidebar, a little puzzle piece there, and then uh, find the xdebug plus VS Code integration. And so this is basically just going to do the configuration for you. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this. Uh, if you want to go deep into the um, settings JSON file of your VS Code and manually set it all up, you can, but, or you could just click that and it does it for you. Um, this is way easier. So um, next thing, if you don't already have a site set up in local, you'll want to go set up a site. Um, so you'll go create a site and you'll start it up. And then all you really do um, is go to the tools tab and click the run configuration to VS Code. That's where it actually does the setup for your settings JSON file and um, you know, sets the paths for your project and does all that kind of good stuff um, in your hidden .VS Code directory. Uh, so you'll basically just click that after you've started your site. Uh, and then there is, in the overview tab there, there is a toggle for turning xdebug on and off. Like I said, way easier than the two-day installation process I went through when I first uh, set this up. Um, way easier. So literally just toggle it on. And then uh, there's kind of two aspects, uh, right? So you've, you've got your local environment set up. You've got a site running. You've turned on xdebug. You've got everything configured on the VS Code side, um, almost. And then, um, so there's two things that you're kind of missing, right? You need to make sure that the browser sets a cookie to let uh, VS Code know that you want to debug something. And then, on the VS Code side, you have to tell it, hey, we want to listen for a debug session. Um, so if you pick one up, let's, let's work with it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is install this xdebug helper for Chrome. That's assuming you're using Chrome. Uh, if you're not, I'm sure there's an equivalent uh, for <laughs> Firefox and all those. I didn't go looking all those up. Um, but yeah, so you can install this xdebug helper. And then um, when you go to the options for this uh, tool, you will actually select um, VS Code as the um, IDE key. Uh, so obviously, if we're using something like PHP Storm, we'd set it to PHP Storm. Um, I think this is actually an outdated image. Uh, you don't have to go to other. I think it has its own VS Code thing now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, save that. And so then basically your cookie that gets set is going to be specifying VS Code as the IDE um, that, it's, that it's trying to pick up. So in the top right corner, uh, by your address bar, there's a little bug icon that'll show up once you have that installed. And then you'll be able to click it and hit the debug option. So that just sets the cookie. Um, there's really no, like, usually I'll just turn it on and leave it on, even if I'm turning xdebug off and then on and then off and then on. Um, I just don't have to remember, and the cookie's always there. Um, so I, I'll leave it on. <coughs> So the one thing that we're still missing on VS Code side is the extension that actually allows you to do the debugging in PHP. So you'll want to go find the PHP debug uh, extension. Uh, there are a few. This one is the most popular, and it is you know by xdebug. So that's the one that you want. 
And then um, once you do that, you will set a breakpoint. And setting a breakpoint is as simple as finding a line of code that you want to start debugging at. And you click just to the left of the number, and it'll put a little red dot there. And that red dot means that when your debugger runs, it's going to stop at that line of code. Um, so then at the top, well, this little bar is actually kind of covering it up. I think the, yeah, so this is what the little, little bar up here looks like. Um, you'll click on that. And um, assuming you've done a recent installation of uh, local um, and you're running xdebug3, which is kind of the default at this point, uh, you'll just want to make sure that you click on that particular configuration so that uh, it's correct. And then from there, um, the little, it's kind of weird because it's like a, a two buttons in one button. Um, the right part is a drop down and the left part is a button that you click to start listening for debugging. <laughs> so you click the little green triangle and then what will happen is it'll add a few things to the screen. So you can see up here at the top, there's like this little bar. Um, it's got a pause button and a stop button and a, what looks like a rewind and some other things. Um, so these are the buttons you'll use to kind of navigate um, in the code. And then uh, down at the bottom, you'll have this little orange bar that shows up and then that's how you know that VS Code is ready and listening for um, a debug session. So then the next thing you'll do is you'll go to the browser and load up your page or trigger an AJAX call or whatever it is that's going to trigger that code to run. And then you will be in an active uh, debug session. And so as you can see, well, we kind of cropped it a little bit just to make it easier to see. Uh, but you'll see like all the variables and things that are defined at that point. Now, again, this is the index file in PHP, so it's one of the very first things it loads. So there's not a whole lot that's happened at this point. <laughs> Um, but, you know, any cookies that are set, um, so like you'll see your xdebug cookie in the cookies bar uh, section there. And then, um, you know, any globals, like server configuration settings that get set by, the, uh, by Nginx or whatever it is that you're using. Um, so all those things are there and visible. And then uh, this little bar here at the top where you can manipulate the session you can hit the uh, resume button. So if you have another uh, breakpoint, it can jump to that. Or if you don't, it'll just finish loading the page. Um, you can step into a line of code. You can force step into lines of code. So like if you have a conditional and you're like, oh shoot, I need to get into here, but the condition's not right to do that, you could just force it to go into that condition. So um, a lot of cool stuff that you can do. Definitely something, if you haven't done this before, spend, I, you know, even if it takes you a week, do it, play with it, force yourself to debug this way for a while. Um, I remember when I first started, I would, I would um, uh, you know, jump into a de debug session and I'd be like, ah, this is complicated and then I'll just do a var dump. Uh, but then, you know, after a while, uh, it gets easier, right? Like you get more used to it. Um, you figure out a little better how to explore and find specific things um, and to, to navigate, you know, from over here to over there and things like that. So uh, definitely stick with it. It is worth it. And I've been using this for 15 years now. And it has, yeah, this is the difference between doing small websites and doing enterprise level work. So, um, <clears throat> so PHP Storm is not a whole lot different. Uh, matter of fact, it's probably a little easier. You'll want to install PHP Storm. Um, just a little side note about PHP Storm. It is a paid product. However, it can be free depending on what you do. If you happen to work at a school or have uh, at some sort of like uh, educational, you know, location <laughs> or, you know, virtual, um, they have some free licenses. Uh, if you are an open source contributor and you have a project that you manage, you can get a free license. Um, so there's a lot of different things that uh, could get you a free, free copy. Um, but still, um, the, my code mentor used to say, if this cost $1,000, he'd still pay for it. Um, it's pretty good. So. <laughs> 
So again, dependency, local WP. And then you know, on the add-ons, this time we'll go with the xdebug and PHP storm. And the setup there is basically the same, right? You create a site. Um, where did the slide go where you, okay, it's a little out of order apparently. Uh, <laughs> so you basically go into the tools, you click the configuration, that sets up the configuration in PHP Storm, and then um, uh, you'll turn it on in here, and I'm assuming, yeah, we'll set up the, the Chrome extension this time. We'll go with the PHP Storm, which has its own option there, um, and save that off. Set up, you know, turn on the debugger. So each of these steps is, um, yeah, so <laughs> I can tell you when I first started to, I, I forgot to click the listener button occasionally, and then I'd spend like three hours trying to figure out why I couldn't debug. Um, so don't worry if that happens. It's <laughs> just, this is what the slides are for. Just remind yourself of all the steps. Um, you know, make sure it's on in the browser. Go into the uh, PHP Storm, and there's this little telephone. If it's got the little red uh, thing above the little bug there, it's off. And if it's, you know, no red, you're listening. So uh, it's a little less obvious. Uh, that's the only thing that really tells you it's actually listening. So it's a little less obvious than VS Code. But um, then when you load up your browser, via, uh, PHP Storm will automatically detect that there's an incoming uh, session. And you can actually choose to ignore it, in which case your debugging will not work at that, from that point on. Um, <laughs> so I recommend you click the accept button, and then um, um, you know then you have essentially an active debug session. Um, the part where the slide where you click the uh, here you'll actually click to the right of the the number, um, but it does the same red dot. Uh, you've got some more options though because you can actually right click when you set that breakpoint, and you can say uh, you can set a conditional on the breakpoint and say well. If I, you know, maybe you're in like inside of a for each loop or something like that, and you could say, if this value is empty, then dump out this other value or something like that, um, or well, then stop at that point. Um, so if you've got like, I don't know, thousand entries that you're trying to go through and only like three of them are the ones you care about, you can have it just stop at that, that point. <coughs> so, um, same thing here, we've got all the cookies and all the other variables um, available. And again, I did cut some stuff off there. Um, the goal is to actually go through a live debug session. Um, so uh, let's do that. So we're gonna exit out of this. And let's see. Probably should open this up before. But we got time. All right, so here we are. We have this website called Debug. And um, Xdebug is turned on. The site is not running, we'll have to start it. Um, both will jump over the tools here for a second. You can see technically this one, we have configuration for both because I set up both. Um, but we'll probably just stick with VS Code for now. So again, if you are doing this for the first time, you just click that button um, and then that grays that out. I think, I think if you click and then go back, yeah, it's like, it grays out if you click it. And so it's kind of toggling between them, I think. Um, so we'll click start. So that'll get the site up and running. And we will open up the site. So this is it. Um, we'll go ahead and log in here. Actually, we don't need to log in. We'll just stay on the front end. Um, all right, so now we're gonna open up VS Code. So we've already got the, um, the particular project opened here. So this is the public folder. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, local WP, you can click go to site. So um, 
inside of my user folder, there's a local sites, there's an xdebug folder, um, there is an app directory, and inside of that a public directory, <laughs> and that's where your actual code is. Um, so that's what we have open here in VS Code. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to go to, let's see, index file. So again, just over here to the left, click. We're going to just uh, ignore all these things. <clears throat> and then uh, what we'll do is we'll come over here to the left. So when you install that VS Code uh, debug extension, um, let's see here. Does everything get bigger? Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, so over here on the left, we have this run and debug. Um, so when you click that, that's when you pop over here. You'll make sure that you've got the right selection. Um, it's a little hard to read if you don't have it all expanded. Uh, but we'll go ahead and click the start debugging. So it's listening now. <clears throat> However, the easy thing to forget is, um, let's see, where did our extension go? Did I turn it off? I thought I had it on here. Oh, I was on another, okay, yeah. That's, uh, I was using a different browser profile. I don't actually think I, yeah, here it is, yeah. Where'd it go? It's in this list somewhere. There, is it already At the, the bottom, ah, uh, yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna pen it, so then we'll click that. Well, actually, we'll close this down. So we'll click this here, hit the debug. So now our cookie should be set. And we will jump over. Um, well, actually, we'll not jump over. We'll just refresh this page. Um, that'll immediately jump us into VS Code. And so we're stopped at this line. And we can start to explore. So let's say you know, we want to go to, I don't know, what plugins do we have <coughs> running here? Um, not uploads. Let's see, we're running 2023. So let's say we wanna learn something about 2023. Um, of course, this is a block theme, so that's probably not gonna be very easy. Uh, <laughs> it's mostly uh, JavaScript, let's see. Um, so let's go into somewhere in WordPress core then. Let's find something in the includes folder. Um, anything you're interested in uh, debugging? <laughs> Uh, say that again? Post variables. Post variables? Yeah. Um, like login variable, you know. Gotcha. You try to log into WordPress, admin panel. Right, okay. Um, so technically we don't necessarily have to, well, so if we jump back into the debug session here, uh, we do have, and you can kind of expand and collapse these a little bit, but um, under super globals, for example, we do have if you're doing a form submission, uh, we have this post uh, variable, we have our git variable and all these things. So let's actually just stop the debugger for a second. Go back over here. Let's just add some, uh, you know, question mark, this equals cool, ampersand, uh, debug equals yes. And so now when we come, oh, did it, uh, stopped oh, it stopped session, so it stopped listening. So again, little things. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we refresh, so now we're here again, but we should have uh, some more information, for example, in the uh, Git section. So we see this cool, debug yes. Um, so it's nice to be able to, to do that. So let's say we just wanted to jump in, right? So we have this uh, step into, which is this, uh, you, they're also mapped to uh, buttons, so I hit a F11, it'll do the same thing. Um, and then we have a step over, which is F10. Um, so in this case, I actually recommend using the, um, not the mouse, use your keyboard. <laughs> it's a lot faster. Um, so typically I'll have a button, uh, a finger over F10. Uh, so like if I wanna jump to the next, whoops, Next line, I have to hold the F and key down to. Uh, <laughs> and then when I wanna go into uh, code, I'll hit F11. Whoop. Uh, it's, okay. This is a different computer than I usually debug in. Uh, 
but we'll just do it this way. Okay. So here we are, we're jumping in. So the very next thing we're loading up is this WP blog header. Um, and so we can see what's going on there. So let's say we, uh, we jump down to the next require here where we go into WP load. Um, and so here we are inside of that. And we'll just kind of keep jumping in. So here it's defining abs path. So once we get past that line, we should be able to see um, where is it at? Can you show us what's in globals? Yeah, so I believe there should be constants. Um, you need to expand it, maybe? Yeah, let me collapse this. Uh, they don't collapse as well here. Um, so yeah, we have um, all our server variables. Say that again? The user defined ones. I think we need to expand it. Yeah, and expand it. Right here? No, 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 all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, yeah. There we are. Yeah, so there's our abs path. And so, yeah, you can see we've already set the, well, local WP sets the environment type to local, which makes sense. Um, and then we have our um, abs path set. So we can then uh, jump in. So this is where it's going to do some setting up of error reporting. So if you have your uh, WP debug and stuff like that, um, it's just kind of initial steps into that. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, so you can see this is very helpful to be able to <laughs> navigate. Now the, the hard part initially is figuring out where to start, right? Because uh, you're like, well, I know there's a problem, but I don't know where, where it is. Um, so a lot of times, um, there, well, there is another cool tool that I do recommend. It's, it's a step above uh, dump debugging, but it's not interactive debugging. But it can also still be pretty helpful, especially if you're, for example, like trying to figure out, you know, what action hooks, you know, you're trying to dump stuff out on action hooks and figure out, like, what's going on. You could do that. Uh, it's called Ray. Uh, the, the Laravel people tend to use it a lot. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a pretty handy tool, um, pretty simple. But again, you still have to put like function calls to Ray in your code. Um, and if you're running the plugin, there's a WordPress plugin. Um, it won't output that stuff on a production site, but uh, it'll, it'll log stuff um, as you're navigating. So, you know, it can be, it can be handy. Um, and it'll actually tell you what line of code triggered it. Um, so it can be interesting if you're trying to just like dump out some stuff and then you realize there's a problem and then Ray tells you where it is and you can go start the debugger at that point. Um, it's kind of a interesting mix of things, but, uh, but yeah, figuring out where, where to start is usually the issue. Um, typically the easiest thing to do is to get an idea of what action hook is triggering the thing. Um, so obviously if it's like data that's been manipulated and you're like, why is this data the way it is? You're probably looking for a filter somewhere in WordPress or in a plugin. Um, and then if, you know, you're just getting some weird action, like maybe, I don't know, a site is redirecting to a new location that you weren't expecting, um, that's probably an action hook. Uh, there's, you know, you start to learn after a while what, what action hooks are triggering what, um, but I think that's the hard part when you're talking about WordPress and trying to figure out where things are, are starting and what's, <laughs> what all is affecting it, right? Because um, you can end up in very different places uh, depending on what plugins you're running and what theme you're running and uh, all those things. So um, if, for example, we know that, um, Let's say we were trying to figure out why a site was taking us to a new place when it wasn't supposed to, for example. Um, one of the things that I will typically do is I will go to, uh, they haven't moved it over to the actual uh, core pages, but if you Google WordPress uh, actions, it will pull up the um, codex here with the action reference. So if you're not that familiar with all the actions and things that are happening, um, let me see if I can make that a little bigger. Whoops. 
uh, this button. Well, that didn't work. Oh, hitting the wrong button. There we go. Um, so yeah, so this, this will tell you actions run during a typical request, and they also have another section on the page where it's actions run during an admin request. So depending on whether you're working in the back end or the front end, uh, it could be very different hooks that you're looking for. Um, so these, just scanning these, they'll give you a general idea, of, you know, what, what that hook is for, and, you know, it could be that you have a particular problem and you run through this list and you're like, ah, there's probably like two or three that might apply. Um, so what I would do is just do a search in the WordPress code, find that uh, action, set your debugger there, just see what all comes through. Um, if everything looks normal, then try the next one on the list. Um, so there's a lot of things, for example, that happen on the init hook. So all your post types are registered and a lot of plugins are initializing some stuff. So um, that is not a bad place to start if you're not sure what all's going on, if you're uh, just trying to toy around. Uh, it's a good place to see what happens there. Um, An after setup theme is like one of the first hooks that is available to themes. So just so you know, if you're debugging something in a theme, um, you want to start with after setup theme. And most things in the theme configuration-wise are probably getting set up in there. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of things that happen on the page. So, um, <clears throat> so if you're talking about, like, um, WordPress taking a URL, processing it, parsing it, figuring out what page it needs to load, looking in the database, and then, like, putting all that together and rendering it out, um, then this uh, parse request is kind of interesting. So parse request is where it says, okay, we have this URL or these parameters in the URL and we want to convert that. Uh, you're able to take that and potentially handle that request entirely yourself. So this is where I had a little fun and uh, started creating pages that didn't exist in WordPress and then having them render um, after we hook into this parse request because you can just do whatever you want. Uh, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, so we have things like template redirects. So if, if for example, certain conditions are met, um, particular templates in WordPress will load. So this template redirect is used by WordPress to kind of dictate like this theme template's gonna be used or that theme template's gonna be used. But it can also be used for plugins to reroute to custom templates if they want. Um, that's probably not the best way to do it unless you are in full control. <laughs> um, so if you're working like enterprise stuff, it might make more sense. Um, but then we have, you know, WP head. So this is where all our styles and, and scripts are printed out. Um, then we have, you know, we, the loop start. Um, so if you ever wanted to hook into the beginning of a loop, uh, you can actually use that and output something before all the list of posts. Um, and then we have the post, so as it goes through each post, um, it's going to run through those. And then, of course, it'll go through the content uh, filters and stuff. This is just the action list. There's a separate page that actually lists all the filters. Um, so if you're dealing with data that's getting manipulated, you might want to check that list. But um, just to get an idea of the overall flow of WordPress, what action hooks happen in what order, a lot of the issues um, when I first started was I would hook into something thinking it would work and it just never worked. And the reason was is because I'd hooked into a, a thing at a later hook after the other thing had already run, so it never ran my thing because it wasn't gonna run again, right? Uh, so that kind of stuff, you know, when you run into that, uh, this is where the debugger will help you realize um, because you can jump into uh, yeah, we, you can jump into the, the bit of code that, uh, that tells you what the current filter is uh, or action or whatever. And then, um, so when you're realizing that, well, I hooked into it, but it's not happening, um, you can actually jump into that and see all the hooks and all the actions that all the plugins have added in WordPress. And you can just peruse that list. And then that can be also a good starting place. Yeah, WP underscore 
being a break point? Yeah, um, yeah, so we can, we can jump there. Let's see, we'll have to find it. WP underscore loaded. Um, and so the do action is where it would actually do the thing. So this is where it is. So, whoops. There. How is it not sticking? Hold on. Does it need to stop it or does it need to run it? Well, I can stop it, see if it'll let me. That's weird. PHP Storm lets me set breakpoints while I'm in a session. So, <laughs> um, but I wanted to show it in VS Code because uh, I think most people probably use this. We may have already been there. What's that? We may have already been Oh, well, that's true too. Yeah, it, it probably, uh, we may have jumped past it because we did go to this WP load. Although I don't think that would have run until toward the end, but uh, either way. So we will. But those are breakpoints we could set. Yeah. You can do it before you get run. True. <laughs> So we will restart that, come back over here and reload that. So we're just gonna hit the resume button because we know we have two breakpoints, this one and then the one we actually wanna be at. So we're just gonna resume to the next breakpoint. So this is where we have WP loaded. Um, so there are gonna be a lot more things here. Um, the other thing is that, um, that is super helpful is the watch. So let's jump into the do action this way. <laughs> um, so here again, we have WP filter, WP actions, WP current filter, all of these things. So when we're in here, um, we should have, yeah, locals, local variables. So these are all the local variables here. So right now, uh, WP current filter, I guess this is maybe what the first hook in WordPress, uh, or well, I guess we haven't pulled in the globals yet, so we have to step uh, to the next line. And well, technically this line counts as three because there's three things there. Uh, so we have to go through it three times. Uh, but now we can see what actions are registered. So we have um, MU plugins loaded, registered taxonomy, registered taxonomy category. So all the plugins and all the WordPress core and all the themes are gonna show all of that here. So if you've registered something and you're not seeing it, you should be able to check this list. Um, <clears throat> and so here we have filters. So we got 345 here. Um, and of course all of these are um, interesting. So if you're having query issues, you might wanna start with um, some of the query pre-get posts type hooks. Um, and then there's, um, yeah, everything from like user email, um, all kinds of stuff. So we can, um, let's see, there should be, yeah. So the cool thing is you can set up a watch. So if you wanted to monitor a uh, particular expression, so it doesn't have to be a variable, uh, but it can, you know, it can be. Uh, so if we just wanted to monitor, well, what, you know, WP actions, dollar sign hook name, that's, that's a kind of a dynamic thing, right? Like that's kind of hard to figure out maybe what, you know, because you have to expect, inspect what hook name is and then go to WP actions and find the hook in the giant array. And it, it's a lot of hassle, especially when it's changing, like every time you hit this function. Um, <clears throat> so what you can do is WP underscore Actions, dollar sign, hook name, and then when we hit enter, right now it's null because we haven't gone past that line of code. Um, but if we go into that, um, so well, yeah, in this case it's saying if it's not set, so it's not set. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we'll kind of jump through. Um, so let's do this. Let's. Uh, Let's set, yeah, let's just do a breakpoint there. So let's just keep running. All right, so here we are. So now WP actions dollar sign hook name is two. Uh, so, you know, uh, so yeah, so, you know, there's a kind of thing where you're like, okay, well, how does WordPress handle all these things from more plugins and everything else? And so it gives you full visibility into every hook, every filter, um, 
and it may not be quite as obvious that something <laughs> is a plugin hooking in versus uh, WordPress itself hooking in, um, but after you, you know, as you do this more, it'll become easier to kind of figure those types of things out. Um, so, yeah, so we have this WP hook, which is will have callbacks, um, and then the callback here has a priority of 10, and then inside of that we have this escape URL. Um, so that's the um, <coughs> uh, function that's hooking in there. And then uh, so we have this escape URL function and an argument that's passed in. Um, and so a lot of times, like, you can just go find this function, escape URL, and see how it works. Um, so if you're doing this and this plugin has registered something, it'll probably have a more obvious function name like Yoast underscore, <laughs> I don't know, get metadata or something. Um, <clears throat> and then, then it becomes obvious that you're dealing with a particular plugin as opposed to maybe something that WordPress core is doing. Um, of course, in this case, I don't think we're really running any plugins, so everything you're seeing here is just WordPress itself. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of a general idea. Um, let's see, maybe got technically about 10 minutes, which I think is supposed to be allotted for questions, so uh, probably should take a few. <laughs> uh, but if nobody has any, we, we can poke around a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I use uh, TenOp Docker uh, for a local uh, environment. You ever use I haven't, TenOp Docker? Yeah, I haven't specifically used TenOp Docker for m local. Um, so I'm not sure what. Uh, Nicely yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> Docker, like, <clears throat> I know for, um, was it uh, Lando, which is Docker setup, you set up a YAML file and, you know, it handles all the setup for you. Um, you know, you could just set up like, they have a little, depending on which operating, uh, you know, what do you call it, server software and everything else you're running, it may have some different examples in the documentation. You just copy them in and it'll set up xdebug. Um, but yeah, I haven't specifically used that. Any, any experience with MAP? Uh, I haven't used MAMP in a very long time, um, so I can't speak to it now. Um, in the past, when I was using it, I don't think there was a way, <laughs> a way to set it up. I, hopefully, that's changed. Uh, but yeah, I think that was actually what I was using when I was spent a long time setting it up. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it could be. Yes, okay. Yeah, because I have the pro and I use that. Gotcha. Yeah. So if you pay for it, you get XDB. Oh. Sorry. Oh, it died. Oh, it did. Oh. Okay. You can hear me again. <laughs> what is this for? Um, it died. Oh. Battery. Battery's out. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yeah. You watched the variable WP action. Is that? Contextual only makes sense when you're stepping within that function. Yeah, so so if if you set a watch and it's only like a variable that's in a particular function, it'll show when you're in that function, but outside of that it'll just be like null or you know some empty empty value. Um, I think in PHP Storm if it's not even in context, it says something like what does it say? It's like it's red and it, it tells you it's like undefined or something. Um, so, yeah, different experiences in each environment, but um, mostly the same. All right. So, um, yeah, so we, well, probably should just wrap it up. So I don't know who's speaking next, but, um, but yeah, I, I think this is really cool. Um, I have, um, yeah, I, almost every week I run into a problem where this solves a problem. <laughs> Would you mind giving us a quick summary of the, what the icons mean in the toolbar? Yes, so, yeah, if you hover over them, it'll actually tell you. Um, so this one is the continue, so you hit F6, does the same thing. 
Um, so that is, if you have multiple breakpoints, it'll just jump to the next breakpoint. Or if there's no breakpoint after that, it just finishes whatever it's doing and WordPress is done with loading its code. Um, the, the arrow moving over the dot is the step over. So for example, if you're running through the code and you hit a require statement and you don't want to go into a new file, you want to stay in the file you're in, you would jump over that. Um, so it does not then load that file? Oh, it loads the file. It oh, just it doesn't, doesn't take the it, it doesn't take the debugger gotcha. through it. Yeah, it just kind of skips over it. Um, and you could do the same too with uh, uh, just particular. Just kind of run to the next breakpoint. Yeah, if you're on like uh, where we're at now, if you do step over, it just takes you to the next line. Um, but you know, if if that next line would take you into something, it'll skip that. Um, so then the uh, the step into is if you're on a line like we are now, it'll just take you to the well, actually, yeah. Um, so it takes you to the next thing. So in this case, the conditional didn't qualify to go into that code, so it skipped that, jumped us to the next applicable line. Um, but again, if the next line was a require, it would take us into that file. Um, so if, for example, you get in too deep, right? You're like, I gotta, I gotta back this out. Um, there's also this up arrow, which is the step out of. So for example, right now we're in this WP includes plugin. Um, so I want to, I just want to get out of this function, right? So I hit step out, and it's going to jump me out. So in this case, we were going through the parse tax query, and so that spit us back out into the function where that was happening. So, um, and also helpful, as you're going through and, and looking at everything that's happening, you have this call stack. So you say, okay, where did I start? I started an index, and then somehow all these files loaded, and then, you know, these, these methods and whatnot from these locations, uh, and now we're where we are now. Uh, so that's like your roadmap. So like, a lot of times when you're debugging, you'll, you'll say, okay, I don't know what went wrong, but I know at this point it's broken, right? So you can go to that point, and you can say, okay, well, what happened to get here? Uh, you can look at the call stack and figure out what files loaded and all that kind of stuff. You can inspect your variables and be like, okay, well, what is or is not in the list of filters or actions that we're expecting? Um, and of course, you have your watch, so you can set up that for multiple things. And you know, if you're trying to hook in and create your own virtual page that doesn't exist in WordPress, you might want to watch a few things about the URL or a few things about the internal state of the post and things like that. Um, and then, yeah, so it actually will show you too here what the breakpoints are. So if you wanted to disable a particular breakpoint, um, you could do that. Um, so it's easy to kind of manipulate and end up where you want to be. Uh, but yeah, so then the um, next button here is restart. So that's just going to, uh, I think it just reloads the page. Let's see. I don't know, maybe just restarted the session and we have to go reload the page again. But <laughs> I, I don't use that one very often. Uh, and then the stop. So uh, there's also a disconnect option, which is where it will completely shut down th the session, um, which I think it does by default when it finishes. So, but yeah. So I think I'm out of time, but yeah, one more question. So when you're watching a variable like that, is there a way how you can the last value before you jump out, or do you, if you're watching variables, you always have to like step into the function, step again and again until like the loop is over, or is there a way where I can just run it and maybe sort of have a log of what that variable was? Or how that, it was? that is the application for using Ray, uh, because it will log it all and keep it in the log. Um, as opposed to this, which is just like whatever the current state is, that's what you get. Um, so that's that's my use case for using both of those tools. Um, you said Ray. Ray, yeah. So uh, uh, Spatey Ray, uh, there's a plugin. Uh, so it's put out by the. Uh, uh, say it again. Is it R A Y Ray? Yeah, it's R A Y Ray. Yeah. 
And uh, so yeah, there's a WordPress plugin you install, and um, you could just put the word Ray uh, function call uh, and just put whatever values you want in there, and then it will. You, uh, Ray is technically a paid tool, though, uh, so I think it's. Well, just side note, uh, Black Friday, they do a lifetime deal. So for like 300 bucks, you can get it for life. Um, otherwise, I think it's 60 oh. a year or something, uh, something like that. Not too bad. It's pretty helpful. And again, you know, they, between the interactive debugging and that, being able to log everything and kind of see everything that happened in a particular loop all at once, um, versus like maybe setting a conditional breakpoint and honing in on just like one thing when it's at a specific value. Um, yeah, so there, yeah, so definitely something worth checking out. I should probably just pull it up here so you guys can see. Um, so this is the official documentation page. Um, so, oh, it's 49, 49. Um, so that's like an application you install on your machine, and anytime uh, you use the WordPress plugin, which is also um, by the same name, it's a little hard to type with one hand. Um, so let's see, should be a WordPress. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so it's as easy as install this plugin, pay for and download the application have the application open in your code. Um, you, you'll, you said you have to dump the function in, right? Uh, yeah, so you, yeah, that's, yeah. it's kind of the toss up. Yeah, it's yeah. a better version of Vardump, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vardump, it's, it's, just, it's always a mess on the page, right? When you Vardump <laughs> something, you're, you're like, oh, well, that's hidden behind some like black background and I can't see it and it's hard to read. Whereas this is like, okay, well, we're taking it all out of that, putting its own tool so you can see everything. Um, and you can assign labels and colors and um, all kinds of stuff um, to, to do that. Um, so definitely worth checking that out as well. But, but okay, I got to wrap it up. So <laughs> I'm done. Thank you. <laughs>